Good evening, everyone. It's Father Bob Gross here. I'm in my dining room, and I got to share with you something. I just got uh, blown away <laughs> again by the Holy Spirit connecting all the dots. So it is 1010 on February 3rd. Um, and I didn't plan to do this. Um, I've been starting a new habit uh, of praying uh, the Office of Readings, which is one of the hours of the Liturgy of the Hours, uh, the night before for the upcoming day. Hi, everyone who's coming on. Um, and the Liturgy of the Hours is the longer of the hours of the Liturgy of the Hours, in which you pray some psalms, then you read a nice scripture from the Bible, and then you read a scripture from a church father or some ancient writer or a saint. And after we just went through this mission, this is this is for the people who have all been to the mission, okay, that we've had in the last three days. The, the church gives us a, a homily by a spiritual author from the fourth century, which means it's the 300s, so 300 AD. And what I want to do to you do to, tonight before I go to bed is I'd like to read this homily to you because... And I have it on the post. You can look at it. And then I'm going to uh, put it on its own in a post. Um, it's describing a person being filled with the Holy Spirit. And I want you to pay attention to how this, how this writer describes it. Okay? <sighs> Holy Spirit connecting the dots. So let me just um, read it to you here. It's on the post if you want to read along. From a homily by a spiritual writer of the 4th century... I remember what we just went through with uh, the mission that we just had. Okay? Those who have been considered worthy to go forth as the sons of God and to be born again of the Holy Spirit from on high and who hold within them the Christ who renews them and fills them with light are directed by the Spirit in varied and different ways. And in their spiritual repose, <laughs> they are led invisibly in their hearts by grace. What does that sound like, resting in the Spirit? At times they are like men who mourn and lament over their fellow men. And pouring forth prayers for the whole human race, they plunge into tears and lamentation on fire with spiritual love for mankind. At other times, they are enkindled by the Spirit with such love and exaltation that were it possible, they would cl clasp in their embrace all mankind and without discrimination, good and bad alike. Sometimes they are cast down below all mankind in lowliness of spirit so that they reckon theirs to be the lowest and most abject of conditions. And sometimes they are held by the Spirit in ineffable joy. At one time they are like, brave, like a brave man who puts on the king's full armor and goes down into battle and he fights bravely against the enemy and defeats them. In like manner, the spiritual man takes up the heavenly arms of the Spirit and marches against the enemy and engaging in battle tramples the foe beneath his feet. At another time, the soul is at rest in deepest silence, tranquility, and peace, existing in sheer spiritual pleasure and in ineffable repose and a perfect state. Are you hearing what I'm reading here? Again, the soul is instructed by grace in a certain understanding in the ineffable wisdom and the inscrutable knowledge of the Spirit on matters which neither tongue nor lips can utter. Then again, the soul becomes like any ordinary man. In such varied ways does grace work within them, and many are the means by which it leads the soul, renewing it according to God's will and training it in different ways so that it may be set before the Heavenly Father pure, whole, and blameless. We too, therefore, must make our prayer to God and entreat in love and in great hope that he may bestow upon us the heavenly grace of the gift of the Spirit. 
We pray that we too may be guided by that spirit, that he may lead us into the fullness of divine will and refresh us with the very kinds of his repose, that by the help of this guidance, exercise of grace and spiritual advancement, we may be considered worthy to attain to the perfection of the fullness of Christ, as the apostle says, that you may be filled to the complete fullness of Christ. Amen. That reading described the church in the 300s. That reading just described what our parishes went through in the last three days. I'm reading it, and I'm being blown out of the water. I just wanted to share that with you. So, praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. I'll put up the post, and you can read it yourself. May God bless you. Thanks so much. Have a great night. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night.